Well, you heard it from the horse's mouth and he's not the only one. By the way, Sanjay Nirupam also yesterday, leader of the Congress in Maharashtra, tweeted pictures of what he said, 5,000 people who were made to line up in Dharavi, stuffed like cattle, his words, in buses, and then left to rot on footpaths. These are what leaders in Maharashtra are saying. So please, let's end the politics. Let's give a little dignity to people who just want to go back home. For the last 20 odd days, tensions have been simmering along the line of actual control in East Ladakh. There has been heightened movement of troops after China objected to the construction of a road at the Galwan Nala area, which is well within Indian territory since then. You've heard a lot of reports about what is going on. Some even went so far as to say that a lot of Indian land has been taken over by Chinese troops, that permanent structures. Some even said artillery pieces are now on Indian soil. So today we get you two gentlemen who know this area, who know the LAC, who know Ladakh, like the back of their hands. So don't believe in unverified reports. Hear it from them. You're watching the News Hour at 10, debate number two on Times Now, Super Prime Time. Okay, joining us on the News Hour agenda, Lieutenant General S.L. Narsimhan. He's a member of the National Security Advisory Board. And Lieutenant General Vinod Bhatia, who's been, uh, who is the director of the Center for Joint Warfare Studies, but more importantly, is the former DGMO. I want to ask you first, General Narsimhan, and I'm going to ask the most blunt questions, because this is what the commentary right now is in public chatter. Are we headed for war? Simple answer, no. Well, thank you very much. Now, my second question to you is, how true are the reports about 10,000 Indian troops on this side, on our side of the LAC? Again, a simple answer, negative. You couldn't hear a more blunt assessment. Now, if you could be more descriptive, sir, what is the extent of the Chinese incursion? Are they at the LAC? Do they have permanent structures there? And is there also any possibility of them having artillery or vehicles close to our territory, at the LAC, or in our territory? OK. Uh, first, first question first. Firstly, uh, they're not in on our side of the territory. That is number one. Number two, on the numbers, I told you negative. Yes, there have been more troops the same than the previous one. That is acceptable. But the levels at which the people are saying 5,000, 10,000, that is definitely a no. And third thing is permanent structures. Again, there are no permanent structures at that point uh, or the areas of wherever they have camped there. And uh, fourthly, uh, artillery pieces, I am not aware at this point in time. I know there's a satellite picture which raised a question on, on an artillery piece uh, being likely to be there. It may be there, may not be there. I'm not very sure of that. But the issue that comes up is that both the sides are actually talking to each other on ground, on the senior com military commander's level, and also at the diplomatic level, and the government is monitoring it closely. General Bhatia, you, have, you know this area very intimately. The, uh, the, the major point being made right now by some critics is that this time it's different. There have been earlier skirmishes, but this is an area which did not see such activity in the recent past. Some are even likening it to a Kargil-like situation. How would you respond? No, no, there's uh, nothing like this, no Kargil. These are traditional areas where transmission took place. Uh, there were incursions earlier uh, in 2018 also, Debsang happened. It's the same area. Uh, there has been a definite increase in the number of transmissions. Uh, but that is a very natural thing once the infrastructure comes up, excess is more, uh, our own road has come up. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, surveillance is better, uh, our patrolling is more, so frequency of uh, translation is much more. We have to understand that this is a, a line of actual control doesn't have common understanding. It's a line of perception. We have our perceptions, Chinese have the perception. And there's this gray zone. We also have, uh, we think it is our area, they think it is their area. After all, it's a contested uh, border. Mm -hmm. So we should not get too uh, worked up about it. Uh, these are things which have happened in the past, especially uh, in this particular area, uh, as also the Pengongso area. These are traditionally been uh, areas where there were a number of face-offs. Uh, so this time, the intensity seems to be a little more. 
the uh, it was more than uh, uh, normal uh, but then that was too expected uh, as a road came up last year till last year we didn't have the road so i think this was expected at the tactical operational level and uh, that is what it is we should not see too much into it uh, the signals which are coming from uh, china uh, are very uh, very good in a in a matter of speaking mm. uh, india is very firm uh, india stars is clear there will be no blinking there will be no big pension mm. so that is india stance we're not going to blink out there it's not a step in the past we stood our ground at this time also we're going to stand our ground and this will solve resolve a status quo ante would definitely come about given some time uh, both talks at the military level um, talks at the diplomatic level there's there established mechanisms for this and these are being all exploited and explored uh, but general bhatia we've the, had five meetings so far and nothing no positive outcome has come Uh, according to the reports that have come to us how long do you think this will carry on uh, will it be as long as doklam or longer or we could resolve it faster so no, i i you know it's very difficult to set a time frame for these because parlays are on you have to look at the positives when you're talking that means there's always hope uh, it can take another one talk uh, another uh, meeting and then another two meetings or 10 meetings but the point is that we are talking to each other and that that established mechanism has worked it's worked in the past uh, we have this uh, you know there's a uh, inter china border very uh, it's, it's a set of contradictions okay uh, it is the longest disputed border in the world and the most peaceful disputed border in the world so th- these these are set of cost contradictions we have maintained peace and tranquility uh, based on uh, our consolidating measures based on agreements which have been there hmm. uh, there 93 agreement 96 agreement uh, the 2005 into the 13 So this is a success story. So let them be five parlays or ten parlays. As long as in the end we maintain our stance, China understands that this is the gravity, and they go back. That is all. There is no permanent structure there, like Jalal Nasiman said. Okay. Uh, there is no pause uh, on that. Of course, you know, some tensions have come up, some tensions build up, and India also has built up an equitable, proportional strength. Okay. So it's not as if there is overt aggression, even though. troops from both sides currently are eyeball to eyeball lieutenant general narsimhan the reason why i brought up the kargil reference is because some all of the reports that i have read and there have been just so many with the you know numbers varying from 200 to 15000 one difference that has been pointed out is that as opposed to other confrontations that used to happen when there is a difference in perception which is the euphemism we use always there used to be an altercation there used to be a little pushing around which we've seen 2 years ago but this time reportedly chinese troops came into our territory with clubs with barbed wire knuckle dusters etc and there were significant injuries to our troops is that a correct assessment yeah okay uh, if, even if you if i fully agree with what the bhatia said in addition to that the way i mentioned earlier also the number of troops that are that have actually come into the face of this time is comparatively more than what has uh, what, what used to be earlier and the second thing is on the increased aggressiveness these are the two differences that you see when compared to the past face off that have been happening but the fact remains that it is a range in which all this push and pull and that uh, on the face off take place as i was telling somewhere else today at the lowest level you just do push and pull to ensure that your area is not violated at little higher level you get this stone throwing etc which you also got to see in 2017 in pangongso area when the dolam issue was on and the, in any case the range happens to be from pushing to pulling to opening fire opening fire has actually been ruled out because for the last 50 years as general what you mentioned both the sides have not opened fire yes uh, beyond 1975 so therefore the issue that comes up is you need to stop people from entering your area you can't open fire so you devise some methods to do this i am not saying these methods are correct but that is the way it has happened on the border but again after the first day when it all happened thereafter there has been no major push and pull or kind of this kind of uh, violence etc that has not happened both the sides have pulled back a little bit both the sides are talking to each other so hopefully and again your question regarding how much time will it take face offs like this do take more time to resolve that is number one point that we need to understand hmm. even if you take your mind back to 2013 in dbo when this face off took place 
it took us again three weeks approximately to solve that issue. So timing doesn't matter, like General Bhatia said. As long as we can talk to each other, we can resolve the issue, that will be the way to look at. Like he said, I agree with him again, that territorial integrity and sovereignty is not negotiable. That is something we will defend, and that doesn't mean that we don't want peace and tranquility on the border. We are looking for peace and tranquility along the border, and the talks will continue to find a peaceful solution. Okay. Now, the root of this entire problem, or rather this uh, disagreement between India and China, General Bhatia, is the DBO road. Is the road safe, or are we in danger of having the very important access that now we've uh, developed to the Dolak Bed oldie being threatened by the Chinese? Some suggest maybe even taken over. No, in this particular area where uh, uh, the present situation is there, the road is pretty far away. It's not so close. It, it may look close from here, uh, but it is, it is pretty pretty far and it's pretty safe. It is not that the road is going to get cut off because someone is sitting 13, 14, 15 kilometers away. Uh, it, is, it is, you know, this hybrid area, the senses uh, are, are really multiplied. Uh, the 14 kilometers, 15 kilometers is a, is a long, long distance. So I think the road is safe. Uh, there are definitely there has to be positive factors for uh, 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 for a uh, you know transmission like this, which is uh, more in intensity, more in scope. Uh, there is a little uh, more, little more build up also. Is the text that there? Uh, yes, there is there is sort of a build up out there. Uh, so the, there are things at the tactical level, possibly the operational level, possibly the strategic level, certainly going on. But the fact remains uh, that the two sides are maintaining uh, uh, peace and tranquility uh, as per the given mechanisms, as per the given spontaneous measures. So that is the positive sign. Mm. The signals coming out uh, are, are pretty good, mm. right from Beijing, right from Delhi. Uh, yes. So that is some uh, positive we're going to take that. But General Narsimhan, I I'll be honest with you, most people seem to think right now that we are playing down the seriousness of what's happening. I, I fully agree with what you said, that most of the people think so that we are underplaying. But they haven't understood as to why we need to underplay. There's no need to underplay. That is number one. Number two, overplaying is also not a very correct thing to do. Underplaying is okay, you can question it. So does overplaying. Because the way people have gone eccentric on, on reporting many things which are actually not true is also incorrect. So you need to draw via media between this to get the correct answer. But what I am trying to tell you is exactly what is happening on ground as okay. we know it. And then to draw some lessons out of it. Can I just push you a little further to, uh, if you could just tell me, what are the specific inaccuracies that you are referring to? The overplay. Num numbers are one for that matter. And uh, the way things have been explained, uh, so and so bunker has been created, this thing has been done. I mean, lot of speculation has gone on. Gone Are you referring reports. to the story that about the report correct. about the bunker, the which has allegedly been made on finger four at Pangong? You're saying that's not true? No, even even otherwise, there have been number of reports on this to say that uh, the numbers is one thing which is very clear. The, there have been varying numbers. Nobody knows exactly what the numbers are. There is a clear answer. Similarly, what is happening on ground is something only people who, who are on ground or people who are getting reported to will know. Hmm. Rest of the things are all at the moment of speculation. That is what I was saying. So, could I just again uh, request you to distill what really is happening on the ground, just to be specific? Yeah, just to, that is specifically what I told you. There are you saw those tents which are being shown. Those tents are there. We are not denying that fact. Similarly, both Indian side and the Chinese side are separated for a, for, for a distance, and. Every day there are talks going on at the ground level between the commanders who are actually facing off. In addition, higher level meetings have been held on 22nd and 23rd of this month and more meetings are expected in the near future. The diplomatic uh, diplomatic channels are also open in Beijing and Delhi have been in constant touch. Okay. So these are the things that are actually happening. I, I am not also saying that there is no build up. There is a build up which is behind, which is not in our area again. and. These are troops which are actually generally come for exercise in that area. This is the exercising period for the Chinese PLA in those areas. Yes. So there are troops there which are located there. We are not denying that fact. So therefore, things are to be taken as to what is happening on ground. That is what I was trying to say. All right. I'll, I want to ask a quick question to General Bhatia before I let you go. Oh, just the only political question actually. You know, uh, do you think that the more political pressure there is on us domestically, the weaker our position becomes when negotiating with China? 
Yeah, you see, public sentiment is very important, and public sentiment uh, has to be taken care of. Uh, I think it's a political compulsion, uh, but the fact remains uh, that we have succeeded. And like General Narasimhan said, uh, in the past we always succeeded. Uh, there has to be uh, more questions about it. Our diplomats have to do their job. Okay. Uh, the political direction has to be there. Uh, the military has, is, has to stand firm. So the, all these things, you know, the, 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 uh, the all elements of national power. Uh, have to synergize and move together. So public sentiment def definitely matters, but public sentiment should be based on a rational, public okay. sentiment has to be built up, and we have to be correct about it. We have to see what our national interests are, what our interests are, uh, what is China actually doing, what is India actually doing. Yes. So that has to be, that's very important. You know, the, these, are, uh, these are places which are very high, these are high to places, and the, it is not, uh, traditionally these, these have been places where we have had a contested border. Yes. So there's nothing new about it. This is not the first time that the face was taken place out there. We have resolved it earlier successfully. Status quo ante has been maintained earlier, and I'm sure it'll happen this time also. Okay. And I, I'm fully in agreement to General Narsimha when he says, let us leave and it'll get resolved. Well, as they say in Hindi, sir, aapke muh mein ghi shakkar, overplaying, hysteria, or underplaying is not going to help us. It may take some time, but it will happen when it comes to information. You heard what both the generals had to say. Hopefully, this will go some distance in allaying the public sentiment, the public perception. Thank you very much, both gentlemen, for having joined me on the News Hour Agenda. I'll see you tomorrow at the same time. Thanks for watching.